It is time to talk the top 10 catchers in Diamond Dynasty right now. The first catcher's ranking of MLB The Show 22. We've done first baseman, second baseman, third baseman, shortstops. Make sure to go check those videos out. But today we're talking about those guys behind the plate. Those good power bats for your lineup. Joe Maurer, Jorge Posada, Adley Rutschman, Gary Carter. Ton of great options at the catcher position. The catcher position and the second baseman position. Last year they were extremely thin, but not this year with these new legends and prospects coming into the game. If you're excited for this one, do me a favor. Hit the that like button hit that subscribe if you're new i would greatly appreciate it and i do have to say i am recording this video on thursday night so if a new car comes out on friday and you're seeing this on saturday don't yell at me in the comments i did not see that card come out if they are worthy of mentioning them on this list and make sure to go follow me over on twitch i've been live streaming a ton of mlb the show 22 content no money spent br ranked ton of fun over there hope to see you guys in the next stream but i hope you enjoy the video and let's get it Minica, watch me on Twitch. Ooh, I'm streaming. I'm on YouTube. Subscribe to the channel. Red button beaming. Let's get that sub. Can I take over YouTube? Ooh, we teaming. My content so high. Ooh, yeah, I'm steaming. Ooh, yeah, I'm steaming. Red button beaming. All right, so it is top 10 catchers time. And before we get into the video, just want to say I am recording this video on Thursday. So if they come out with some crazy cards on Friday or on Saturday, they're not going to be in this video. I'm not going to be home on Saturday. and want to make sure I get videos out to you guys. So in the comments down below, if they drop new cards, I will check them out. I will update the rankings in the comments down below. So make sure to check the comments just in case they come out with a new tops. Now catcher tomorrow. We will have to see, but a ton of great catcher options. And like my other videos, these are just my opinion. So so if you agree or disagree with me, that is completely okay, but let's get into it. So we will get started at number 10 with this 88 overall Mike Piazza card. I have never been the biggest fan of Mike Piazza cards. I'm not the biggest fan of his batting stance, his swing. It's very difficult to hit an inside pitch with a Mike Piazza card unless they really fixed his swing this year, which I don't think they did. So this 88 overall card does have pretty solid stats across the board. He's an okay fielder behind the plate with a decent arm to begin the year. He has pretty solid power, pretty solid contact. So if you're looking for a well-rounded catcher Mike Piazza is definitely pretty solid but in game I don't really like the way he plays and that's why he's here at number 10 73 conflict against righties 77 against lefties 88 power against righties 82 against lefties for the most part here the fielding stats are in the mid 70s with 65 reaction time 81 blocking 35 speed he's definitely a solid catcher to get your team started so if you're grinding the nation of baseball conquest you can get him in there with a bunch of other free diamonds he's not a bad catcher for a free no money spent team just getting started at number nine I am gonna go with Salvador Perez. Salvi always gets a ton of upgraded cards throughout the entire year because he's by far the best player on the Royals. Maybe Bobby Witt Jr. was still some of the cards from this year, but right now 85 overall Salvador Perez is a top 10 catcher in the game. Great power. That's what you want from your catcher at the beginning of the year. And you catch Perez on a great inside edge day like he has today. Plus 13 contact against righties. Plus 13 power against righties. He's going to be even better than he is at base. And at base without inside edge, he has 87 power against righties. 107 against lefties. 60 65 contact against righties, 80 contact against lefties. But with that inside edge, he is equally as good against righties as he is against lefties. Normally, 78 contact against righties, 100 power against righties. Today, he's probably like a top six, top seven catcher in the game. But I have to rank him with the worst negative sides of inside edge as well as the positive sides. So it could be a good thing or a bad thing inside edge. So I will leave Perez here at number nine. Behind the plate defensively, he is okay. 53 fielding. Good arm, though, behind the plate for the beginning of the year. 72 arm. 90 accuracy. 56 react time 54 blocking so there will be balls that get behind salvador perez it's going to be unfortunate you throw that curveball in the dirt you may give up extra bases so just keep that in mind when you're pitching and you have perez as your catcher 35 speed pretty standard for a catcher not too fast not too slow if you want to pick him up he's about 16,000 stubs on the market at number eight i'm going to go with yasmani grandal i like him better than salvador perez one because he's a switch handed bat they both have really good power so that's not going to matter too much 93 power against righties for grandal 96 power against lefties for Grandal. Again, like Salvador Perez has the benefits and the negative side of inside edge. Today, he's plus 11 contact against lefties, plus 11 power against lefties, but he is better behind the plate defensively than Salvador Perez. I'm not going to have to worry if I throw a curveball in the dirt, change up in the dirt. It's not really going to get past Yasmani Grandal with 84 fielding, 88 reaction time, and 70 blocking. Way better than Perez's blocking, fielding, and reaction time stats. Perez does have a little bit of a better arm, though, than Grandal, so that goes in Perez's favor. It is very close between the two. 63 arm 
room. 67 accuracy for Yasmani Grandal. But I'm going to go with Grandal with that switch-handed bat. That is huge. Always being an advantage at the plate with pretty good power. Very similar to Perez. A little bit better defensive stats behind the plate. I know he is very slow for speed. He is going to be the slowest guy on this list. But you're not going to see a ton of fast catchers anyway. If you want to pick up Grandal, he's 14K on the market. At number 7, I am going to go with this 85 overall Mike Napoli. Napoli, very close to Grandal and Perez. But I am going to give the nod to Napoli here. Well-rounded at the plate. You want contact, he can do that. You want power, he can do that as well. Very similar contact and power stats against both sides. So righties, lefties, doesn't matter. Napoli can hit them and he can hit them very well. He also has way better contact than Grandal and Perez. That's what's going to put him over them on this list because he is going to last a little bit longer in this game. His PCI size is going to be bigger than Grandal and Perez and you always want a bigger PCI size. So that always helps. His fielding stats are definitely not great. Not going to lie about that. 64 fielding, 62 arm, 69 accuracy, 50 rack time, 74 blocking. I honestly don't see a ton of people stealing bases though in MLB The Show. If you pitch it out, if you know if they're going to steal, he's going to throw them out anyway. So it really doesn't matter too much, honestly, with the arm behind the plate because I really don't see a ton of people stealing. But if they do recognize you do have Mike Napoli behind the plate, if they're a really good player and they do notice that, maybe they'll try to take advantage of his bad arm strength. So that is something to keep in mind. If you want to pick him up, like I said, he's the Rangers Live Series Collection Award. At number six, I am going to go with this 90 overall faces of the franchise, Sean Murphy card. In my opinion, way better than Riamuto, way better than Carson Kelly. Those two catchers in the face of the franchise program, I honestly dislike them a ton. They are not good at all. I used Riamuto for a while on the main team. He wasn't very good for me at the plate. I used Carson Kelly on the no money spent team. He wasn't very good for me at the plate. Murphy, though, has great power. He's a little bit worse of a version of this Gary Sanchez card that we're going to talk about because really good power, not very good contact, but the difference between this card and the Gary Sanchez, this card's defensive stats behind the plate are one of the best in the game right now. 95 fielding behind the plate, 98 arm, 71 accuracy, 99 reaction time, 88 blocking. I know that Sean Murphy became a little bit of a meme because he's in that AL West face of the franchise pack with Kyle Tucker, Corey Seager, Mike Trout, Mitch Hanniger. Nobody really wants to pull the Sean Murphy card, but he is by far, in my opinion, the best catcher in the faces of the franchise program. And I feel like every single catcher that we talked about for the most part has 35 speed. I honestly didn't even notice that. That's kind of funny. Besides Yasmani Grandal, I feel like a couple catchers that we talked about already had 35 speed. Very interesting, but this card has a ton of power, which is what you want, and it has a great arm behind the plate. So unlike Mike Napoli, no one's going to be able to steal on the Sean Murphy card with that 98 cannon of an arm. If you want to pick him up, he's 23,000 subs. At number five, speaking of that 89 overall Gary Sanchez card, there's a little bit of a better version than that Sean Murphy card. Sean Murphy is better behind the plate defensively, but Gary Sanchez swings a rocket at the plate, especially against lefties. He has that power against righties, 96 power against righties, but he has that contact and power against lefties. 98 contact against lefties, 111 power against lefties, one of the best power bats at the catcher position. To begin the year, I feel like we got the same exact card last year at MLB The Show 21. I think it's the same exact card art and the same exact overall, but regardless, this card is insanely good. The only problem is his contact against righties isn't the best, but I do think it is higher than last year's game, so the PCI size right now isn't going to be too small. It should be a decent size, unless you're going up against 99 Randy Johnson in the beginning of the year. Gary Sanchez, actually, though, he would be facing a lefty, so the contact would still be good, and the PCI size would still be really solid. If he had better contact against righties, though, he'd be in the top three, but because of that, he's not going to last super long in this game, but he will be a great bench bat option all the time for you against lefty arms in this game. 70 fielding, 82 arm, 80 accuracy, 72 react time, 58 blocking, 33 speed. Gary Sanchez, this card's absolutely disgusting. Great for Battle Royale, great for your ranked seasons team. At number four, we're going to have another Yankee catcher here, and it's going to be 91 overall Jorge Posada. A switch-handed bat is always going to have the advantage over a righty or a lefty, and that's why Posada is going to be over Gary Sanchez. Switch-handed bat, really good lefty hitting splits as well, kind of like Gary Sanchez. 106 contest against lefties, 108 power against lefties, but he does have better contest against righties by a lot than Gary Sanchez, but Sanchez does have better power against righties. So really, it could go either way here between Sanchez or Posada, but I'll always take the switch-handed bat over the righty or the lefty. That way, I give myself an advantage at the plate every single time. I don't have to worry about the matchup. I will take the switch-handed bat over the righty or the lefty. For the fielding stats, everything is in the low to mid-70s here. 75 fielding, 75 arm, 72 accuracy, 72 react time, 75 blocking, 
28 speed. Posada cards are always great at the beginning of the year. His 90 last year was amazing, and the 91 card, really good too. You can get him two different ways for this card. You can make World Series Division and Ranked Seasons, or you can buy him on the market for about 65k. At number three, though, you might be a little underwhelmed here with the power stats of this 91 overall Ali Rushman, but if you have used this card, I just picked him up for my main team. I've used him in Battle Royale on the No Money Spent team a bunch of times. Ali Rushman is absolutely disgusting. I love his endgame card last year. I love the swing. He never got out for me. I was batting like 400 with him in about 60, 70, 80 plate appearances. I forgot how many times I used this Ali Rutschman card, but a good amount of plate appearances. He was batting 400 for me, decent amount of home runs, and this card is really good. Another switch handed bat like Posada, good contact, good enough power. You get some parallels going. You can get him up to 85 power against righties, 83 against lefties, 90 contact against righties, 91 against lefties, mid 80s for the fielding stats here, 85 fielding, 85 arm, 81 accuracy, 75 react time, 85 blocking, and 54 speed. I think he's the fastest catcher that we talked about so far. So if you're looking for the best well-rounded catcher, there might not be a better one on this list than Adley Rutschman. Very solid contact hitter. Can hit for power as well. Very good fielder and very good speed for the catcher position. And he's a switch-handed bat. I love Adley Rutschman cards and I can't wait to try him out on the main team. If you want to, you have to complete the prospect collection. At number two, we are going to have 96 overall Gary Carter. And I do feel bad for Gary Carter because he would be number one on this list if they didn't come out with the new legend Joe Mauer this year because this Gary Carter card is excellent for the beginning of the year. Gives you everything you want. Great power and contact against lefties like Posada, like Gary Sanchez. He has better contact against righties than Sanchez and better power against righties than Jorge Posada. 72 contact against righties, 109 against lefties, 94 power against righties, 108 against lefties. Pretty solid swing. It's not great. It's not horrible. He's a solid enough defender. 78 fielding. Pretty good arm behind the plate to begin the year. 85 arm, 78 accuracy, 70 reacts time, 82 block. 38 speed. If Joe Maurer wasn't back in the game this year, Gary Carter would be the best catcher in the game, but I love that Maurer card. as a top three card of the game. We're going to talk about him right now, but if you want Gary Carter, go complete the Mets Live Series collection. At number one, if you couldn't get the hint already, it is 96 overall Joe Maurer. And this card honestly has the stats to be an end game catcher at the beginning of the year, and this isn't even his 99 overall card. We are gonna get a better Joe Maurer card at some point this year, and I can't wait for that card. I can't wait to get this card on my main team. I've used him in Battle Royale. He's insanely good. Everybody's saying he's the best catcher in the game. I think he's a top three card in the game. Look at the stats. He has that content that can go late into the year. 115 content against righties, 103 against lefties. Good enough power with parallels. You'll get it higher than this. 86 power against righties, 74 against lefties. Stud behind the plate defensively, 90 fielding, 80 88 arm, 87 accuracy, 74 reaction time, 86 blocking with 47 speed. This card is insane, and it's not even his 99 overall card. I can't wait for his 99 overall card. I want this 96 really badly. I just got Adley, and I already want to replace him with his 96 overall Joe Maurer. This card is that good. He's probably going to cost you about 250,000 to 300,000 stubs, though, because if you do want to pick him up, you have to complete the cover Adley collection. All right, everyone, that's going to do it for the video today. The top 10 catchers in the game right now in the comments down below. Let let me know, did you agree or disagree with my list? If you did disagree, that is completely okay. Give me your best catcher in the game right now in the comments down below. But if you did enjoy the video and you found it useful, do me a favor, hit the like button, hit that subscribe button if you're new. I would greatly appreciate it and I'll talk to you on the next video. Have a great rest of your day. Peace.